A very powerful idea in signal processing is to express arbitrary signals as sums of other basic signals. In this video, we're going to look at the Fourier series, which describes an arbitrary signal as a sum of sinusoidal building blocks. Our objectives are to introduce the idea of representing arbitrary signals as sums of sinusoids, then to define the exponential Fourier series, and introduce the integral formula for determining the Fourier series coefficients. Now, the Fourier series is named after Joseph Fourier, who was a French mathematician that lived in the late 1700s and early 1800s. He also was very scientifically oriented in that he studied heat flow problems, among other things. One of his key ideas was to propose representing a signal, or the function, as a sum of harmonically related sinusoids. And this was a very revolutionary and controversial idea at the time. And it was opposed by many, many of the eminent mathematicians and scientists of the day. Yet it turns out he was right, and Fourier methods now are widely used in math and in science. So we're going to start with a signal x of t, and we'll assume that the fundamental period of that signal is t naught. In that case, I can represent x of t as a constant term, or a term with zero frequency, represented by amplitude a naught, plus a sum of cosines whose amplitudes are a k, and whose phases are phi k, and whose frequencies are harmonically related. That is, they are integer multiples of a fundamental frequency f naught. And the fundamental frequency f naught is the inverse of the fundamental period. Now the AKs and VKs are yet to be determined, and we'll look at how we do that in a moment. To illustrate this idea, I'm going to start with a sound produced by a saxophone. Now this is a saxophone playing a note A, and this is one period. We're looking at 0.2 milliseconds. This repeats 440 times a second. So I'm showing you a fundamental period of the note A being played by a saxophone. Now what we're going to do is show that we can represent this wave shape by a sum of sinusoids. And it turns out in this case we don't need very many sinusoids to represent this quite accurately. So on the right hand side here I'm showing two panels. I've got the individual sinusoids that are used to make up this saxophone note. And and then on the right hand side, I'm showing what happens when you use one sinusoid, when you use the first two sinusoids, three, and so on, all the way up to eight sinusoids. So these sinusoids are harmonically related. So you notice that there's one period associated with k equals one, that's the fundamental frequency f naught for that sinusoid. And when I have k equals two, the frequency of that is two times f naught, and you see there's two periods of that sinusoid in the fundamental period of the original signal. And so on, we have three periods when we have k equals three because the frequency of that sinusoid is three times f naught. Now each of these sinusoids has a different amplitude. As you can see, some have larger amplitudes. The first term has the largest. The third term has quite a large amplitude. The fourth term is very, very small amplitude, and so on. And then also the phases change from sinusoid to sinusoid. For example, the sixth term at time zero is coming from a negative value and rising, whereas the first term at time zero is coming from a positive value and decreasing. We've chosen the amplitudes and phases so that adding these up would approximate or represent this original sound. And you can see that with one term, we capture the gross features. And then as we start to add more and more harmonics in, we capture finer and finer structure in the signal. For example, there's a fairly significant change going from two terms to three terms, and that's to be expected because the third term is a fairly large amplitude. In this region here, the two-term approximation is not capturing the dip in the original signal, whereas I add in the third term, I start to get that a lot more accurately. 
and so on as we add more and more terms. You'll notice that with respect to that particular drop at about 0.11 milliseconds, that the sixth term also makes a pretty big contribution. But by the time we get to eight terms, we've almost perfectly represented the original signal. Now, there's some small errors yet, and if we added more terms, we would eliminate those errors as well. So we've taken a fairly complicated signal and we've shown that you can represent it as a sum of sinusoids with different amplitudes and phases. So we can think of these sinusoids as building blocks, Legos if you will, that we use to construct more complicated signals. And this sum of sinusoids is what we're going to call a Fourier series. Now in the previous example my constant term was zero because it was sound and sound doesn't have a constant value, so A0 was zero. But in general, we can have signals that have a non-zero average value, and that's going to show up in A0. Now we're going to rewrite this in a standard form that's easier to work with. So we're going to expand the cosine using the Euler representation in terms of complex sinusoids. By doing this, we have two terms one at frequency kf0 and then one at frequency minus kf0, we can rewrite our sum as going from minus infinity to infinity of lowercase ak times a complex sinusoid e to the j 2 pi kf0 t for this exponential Fourier series to be equivalent to our Fourier series in terms of the cosines we're going to need to have lowercase a0 to be equal to uppercase a0 and then coefficient a sub l will be uppercase a sub l divided by 2 times e to the j phi sub l, provided l is greater than 0. And the coefficient for negative indices k are obtained by taking the conjugates of those for the positive indices. So this is our exponential Fourier series. We can use the Fourier series to represent a signal x of t that is periodic and has a fundamental period t0 equals 1 over f0. Or if you have a signal in which you're only interested in a finite interval, say some interval of length t0, you can also use a Fourier series to represent signals on a finite interval. Now, if you want to represent a non-periodic signal on an infinite interval, then you need something called a Fourier transform. So the big question at this point is how do we find those weights, the Fourier series coefficients, the a sub k's? And there are two ways that can be used in practice. The first method is a special case that's particularly simple, and that applies when x of t is expressed as a sum of sinusoids to begin with. If you have a periodic signal that's expressed as a sum of sinusoids, then you can take the sinusoids, apply the Euler expansion, and directly identify the a sub k. On the other hand, the more general case, if you have an arbitrary signal, periodic signal x of t, or are interested in a finite interval of length t0, then there's an integral formula that gives the Fourier series coefficients. And it states that the kth Fourier series coefficient, ak, is 1 over t0 times an integral, and this symbol, bracket t0 bracket, indicates that we can take the limits over any interval of length t0. And that's useful to simplify the integration. Then our integrand is x of t e to the minus j 2 pi k f naught t dt. This notation means any interval of length t naught. And most often, we're going to use 0 to t naught. Or if the signal has even symmetry about the origin, it's oftentimes convenient to integrate with respect to symmetric interval minus t naught over 2 to t0 over 2. So most of the time, one of these two cases will be the preferred choice, but you can choose the interval to be whatever you wish if it's going to simplify the integration, as long as the duration of that interval is t0. Now this expression is something that we're not going to derive. You can verify that the expression works by replacing x of t with the Fourier series representation, the sum k equals 0 to infinity, ak e to the j 2 pi k f naught t. If you substitute for x of t in the integrand and carry out the integration, you'll get a k equal a k.